lunch break. Um, and welcome to this afternoon session. We have uh, three talks, uh, two in presence and one online. And uh, we are happy to welcome Liliana Rachea. Uh, we'll give a first talk. Hello. Yes, you can hear me. So thank you very much uh, for coming. And I would like to thank uh, especially to the organizers who uh, persisted in organizing this uh, nice activity in person and who were really very helpful in finding all kinds of uh, last moment uh, solutions uh, to enable us to, to come and, and to be here. Um, I'm uh, going to talk about um, the implementation of um, uh, thermal mach machine operations in uh, qubit uh, systems and uh, the formal um, description of that on how to optimize, uh, how to describe the, the, perfor the performance and a way to optimize it. Um, so, first problem. Well, something, yes. Um, and this is a work which uh, has been done in collaboration with uh, all these uh, colleagues. Uh, Pablo Abuso from uh, Barcelona, Vivek Bandari, who was uh, here in Trieste when we started the work, and now he moved to Rochester. Pablo Terren Alonso from Buenos Aires, he's a PhD student in my group. Uh, Saro Fazio from here from uh, Trieste, Felix from von Open from Berlin, Martí Perarno Lovet from Geneva, and Fabio Tadei uh, from uh, Pisa. Um, this uh, study is partially motivated by uh, some uh, nice recent experiments on thermal uh, transport in uh, qubits. This is an uh, example where uh, the thermal uh, conductance uh, in a qubit place between two reservoirs uh, at uh, different uh, temperatures. These two reservoirs are made up uh, of by the surrounding uh, circuit. Uh, in different configurations with and without uh, resonators, um, which um, show very uh, impressive uh, features of coherent transport through the uh, qubit. And also uh, by uh, this other uh, type of um, configurations where uh, qubits are manipulated in order to exchange energy and in this case to implement uh, Maxwell uh, demon uh, operations. Um, the, our goal is to implement thermal machine operations uh, here. And as I said before, to uh, develop a formalism in order to have control also on the performance. Uh, what uh, come to our mind when I mentioned thermal uh, machines are these uh, type of cycles that we uh, study in high school, um, but um, I'm not going to speak about exactly this kind of cycles which uh, operate uh, quasi-statically, so uh, they basically operate at, uh, in the regime of uh, zero power, uh, but on this other type of uh, operations uh, where uh, there is uh, some uh, mechanism which is um, um, permanently um, operating in order to overcome, uh, in this case, the um, gravity, the influence of the uh, gravity. But in our case, it will be some similar operation in which we uh, inject work in order to, um, uh, to um, uh, refrigerate or to extract uh, heat from a, a cold uh, reservoir against a thermal bias. Or uh, the other, the reverse operation in which the heat uh, flowing from a hot to a cold uh, reservoir can be used in order to generate work in a similar way as this uh, Archimedes uh, pump operating uh, in, the, uh, in reverse. Um, to present these ideas, I find it useful to, first of all, introduce the concept of pumping and quantum pumping, which was a, a very popular uh, subject uh, already 20 years ago in the context of electron systems. 
this is a, a, a very well uh, studied device where we have an electron quantum dot uh, which is um, uh, affected by uh, these two uh, voltage uh, gates. These two voltage gates control the uh, degree of contact with the neighboring reservoirs in a way that, for instance, this gate opens, electrons come inside, this gate closes while this other one opens, so the electrons in, inside uh, flow towards the, um, the right uh, lead. So this is um, a possible protocol for this uh, operation with alternating voltages with a phase uh, lag, and the net result after a cycle is a net uh, uh, charge flow from the left reservoir to the right uh, reservoir, which is measured here. So remember these uh, plots, this is basically a, a measurement of the electron uh, charge from the left to the right in a cycle as a, a function of the phase uh, difference uh, imposed in the uh, two uh, gate uh, voltages. Uh, the question is if we can uh, achieve a similar operation but with heat uh, instead of charge and uh, with a qubit instead of a quantum dot. Um, and uh, well, the answer is yes and I'll show you uh, how this works in a while. Um, and uh, we can think about in the qubit in terms uh, of these qubits implemented in these uh, circuits, in these um, superconducting circuits, um, in which uh, we represent the, uh, the surrounding circuit as a, a, a gas of, 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 um, um, of many modes, uh, in our case, because they will play the role of a reservoir, uh, we have this uh, Hamiltonian for the uh, qubit and uh, these parameters, these qubit para the, the parameters entering in the qubit uh, Hamiltonian can be operated uh, in time. Um, and uh, this is the coupling between the uh, qubit, sorry, the qubit and uh, the, the circuit or the reservoir um, which, uh, in, in which enters here some Pauli matrix. So this tau is some Pauli matrix that can be X or Z, mm? in, or maybe Y, but I will consider X or Z. And this uh, type of coupling can be uh, 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 architecture uh, by the design of the uh, circuit. So. Now consider that the qubit is coupled uh, to two of these uh, surrounding circuits in principle for the, for the moment at the same uh, temperature. And imagine that we implement the coupling with uh, different uh, Pauli matrices uh, to the left and to the right. So in, in our case, we choose uh, sigma x in the coupling to the left and sigma z in the coupling to the right. And now let's uh, perform this um, type of cycle. So implementing this, uh, this kind of, um, of uh, different coupling means that if we, um, we prepare the state of the qubit aligned in the x direction, it couples to the left and if it is in the z direction, it couples to the right. And then we can implement this cycle when we change, so this is uh, as a function of time, um, the uh, cycle in the Bx and Bz uh, plane. Um, let's assume that at a given time we couple to the left uh, reservoir and uh, the uh, uh, qubit uh, uh, allows uh, the reception, so there is some exchange uh, um, of energy which is um, uh, received uh, by the qubit from uh, the reservoir. Now we make the qubit evolve, uh, introducing also a set compon component and increasing the modulus, uh, so increasing the level separation uh, here. In this way, 
in this protocol, we will increase the um, amount of energy stored in the qubit. And at some point, we couple only to the uh, right, connecting with this uh, sigma set when it is perfectly aligned in the set uh, direction. So the energy is delivered from the qubit to the uh, right uh, reservoir. At the end of the day, as in the case, in a similar way as in the case of a charge, we will have, a, after a cycle, a net a pumping of heat from the left reservoir to the right reservoir. Of course, during this process, we are implementing time-dependent uh, protocols, so we are also generating some dissipation into the system. Uh, so this is pure pumping, but we can also uh, make a similar gain introducing a temperature bias uh, between the two uh, reservoirs. And in this case, we will have something very similar to this uh, Archimedes uh, pump uh, operation because the pumping will enable to um, work in as a refrigeration, refrigerator, sorry, uh, the, the pumping will enable to uh, inject energy from the cold to the uh, hot uh, reservoir. So this is uh, more or less uh, the um, uh, picture uh, we have uh, in mind. And uh, now I'm going to uh, tell you which are the uh, uh, theoretical tools we developed to study this in more uh, precise uh, way. Uh, so the, the theoretical challenges are the following. We are, we are treating a problem which is uh, all the time out of uh, equilibrium. Uh, so there is no quasi-static evolution at uh, any time of the cycle. And we have to ta properly take into account the effect, simultaneous effect of the temperature bias and the driving. Uh, and the, the, our aim is to uh, provide a proper description of the dissipative effects as well as the heat work conversion uh, mechanisms, which are the, the ones which uh, are the essence of the uh, thermal machine operation. Uh, well, this was uh, proposed uh, in this uh, uh, work um, already published just before the, 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 the original date <laughs> of this uh, conference. Um, and um, uh, the, the geometric uh, idea comes because in the description of the pumping and the heat work uh, conversion uh, op, uh, mechanism, um, concepts like the very phase are uh, really very um, useful and important. Um, this is the, the general uh, setup. So in our case, uh, I'm going to tell you the case of the qubit uh, here, uh, placed between two reservoirs, uh, one hot, one cold. The, these two have uh, different uh, uh, temperatures and it will be operated uh, by, um, so the, the theory is formulated by N uh, driving uh, parameters. Um, and um, I'll focus on the uh, case where these parameters change in time very slowly. Because of that, I'll uh, mention, uh, I'll talk about adiabatic um, uh, driving. And also, uh, in, um, I'll focus on the case of a small bias, temperature bias, so this delta T is on also a small uh, parameter. So this is the operational regime. I'll focus small velocities for the change of the time-dependent parameters, small temperature uh, bias, but I, uh, in principle, for this uh, general uh, formalism, we can not make any assumption about the degree of coupling uh, between the, uh, the driven system and the, and the reservoirs. So um, the energy balance um, is as follows. We have some uh, heat flux into the left reservoir, some heat flux into the right uh, reservoirs. The addition of these two will be equal to the uh, total a power uh, delivered by all the external uh, sources. Um, but 
I'm going to distinguish from this um, uh, heat uh, currents some component which is, um, which is exactly uh, the same but with different sign uh, in the two reservoirs. So this is the, the current that goes from one reservoir and is injected into the, the other one. On top of that, there is a dissipative uh, component of the heat uh, current and um, we can uh, distinguish uh, two operational, uh, I lost the, ah, uh, the two operational uh, modes for uh, this uh, system, for this uh, device. One in which, uh, as a consequence of the um, driving, um, as a consequence of the driving, we of course uh, have a dissipation. Um, but we can use a part of the heat transported from the hot reservoir into the cold one to generate some uh, useful uh, work. This is the heat engine operation. And the reverse operation is the refrigerator in which we inject uh, some um, uh, power uh, and we extract uh, heat from the cold reservoir in, and inject it on the hot reservoir in addition to the, uh, this uh, dissipative uh, flow, which should be smaller than the other effects in order to have uh, something, to have the, this uh, operation in, in reality. Um, from the formal point of view, the strategy is to um, implement a, a linear response um, treatment in the velocities um, and in the, uh, in, in the um, uh, temperature uh, bias and um, to analyze the geometric properties in the uh, space of the parameters, of the driving uh, parameters. I'm not going to provide uh, details, so these are the two uh, references. This, in this reference, we implemented this uh, adiabatic uh, linear response and we uh, in, 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 the work, uh, in this work, we combine with the uh, Latinger uh, theory in order to also include the uh, thermal bias as um, a, a velocity in this formalism and in this way we could treat uh, these uh, two objects uh, together. But um, what, um, I'm, what is important, I would like to tell you, is that uh, the and the, these uh, calculations for the uh, heat uh, fluxes and for the powers uh, using this, um, these expansions, the coefficients that appear, the transport coefficients that appear in these expansions can be collected in uh, this uh, uh, object that has the structure of the of a tensor and we uh, uh, call it uh, the thermal geometric uh, tensor. As um, it is interesting that the, if we um, focus on a zero uh, temperature and we eliminate the reservoirs, uh, this, um, this uh, tensor contains only um, the, uh, this um, uh, uh, asymmetric uh, component and this asymmetric component is exactly the one that uh, Wolfgang uh, Belzig presented uh, early today. But in our case, we will have this also this uh, symmetric uh, component and it is precisely the symmetric component which is associated to the dissipation while the other one is associated to the use, useful uh, work. Um, the structure uh, given uh, these uh, expansions for the network over a cycle and the transportive component of the heat is the following. We have a first uh, term which accounts for the um, uh, dissipation. Here enters the symmetric uh, part of the, of the tensor and, and is bilinear in these uh, velocities. While we have this uh, additional uh, term uh, which is proportional, which can be expressed in terms of a, a line uh, integral and is proportional to uh, the temperature uh, bias, and this process is precisely the interesting one, the one that describes the heat uh, work uh, conversion. Um, as for the charge, uh, we have this uh, first component. This first component here is the same line integral as here with 
a um, different uh, sign um, and describes the uh, the pumped uh, heat. So you see that this uh, this component of the transported uh, heat is not proportional to delta T. So this is something that exists even if we don't have any uh, temperature difference. While this other one is the usual thermal conductance and is, the propor is proportional uh, to uh, delta T. Uh, in the heat engine uh, operation, so these expressions are valid for both heat engine and refrigerator uh, operation. Uh, in the heat engine, what we want uh, is to uh, extract useful work and the way to achieve that is to uh, gain with this term, uh, is this term gains against dissipation. So we need here uh, some uh, negative uh, contribution. So negative in this uh, sign conversion means that the work is extracted uh, from the system. And this is achieved preci precisely when we have pumping from the cold to the, from the, sorry, the hot to the uh, cold uh, reservoir. The other uh, operation uh, implies that uh, we need to extract, so the, to refrigerate, we need to extract uh, heat from the uh, cold uh, reservoir. This is done thanks to this pumping component, which is negative uh, here. And then here in the heat work conversion um, term appears as a positive com contribution. So I have to inject some extra uh, work in order to get uh, this um, this uh, operation. Um, so interestingly, this part, so this, this part in green, that is the one identified as the uh, heat work uh, conversion uh, term, uh, has formally some similar structure as the one we get in Carnot cycles, but now uh, we have not only this uh, component, but also a dissipative uh, one, and this um, is um, evaluated over uh, el, the whole cycle performing a line uh, um, integral. Um, this uh, is, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, associated with the anti-symmetric uh, part of the thermal uh, geometric uh, tensor. And with all these components of the, ten the tensor, we can build up uh, this uh, very uh, field and uh, explicitly express uh, this uh, component as a very phase. Um, the same, something very similar happens in the case of the, um, uh, of, of, of the charge uh, pumping. In the case of charge pumping, you can also express the pump charge as, as, a, as this uh, um, something that has the form of a, of a berry phase. So this is uh, just to highlight that uh, the pumping of heat is uh, somehow similar uh, uh, um, in the adiabatic regime as a pumping uh, of charge, which has been uh, widely investigated. Um, well, uh, in passing, I mentioned that there are also other uh, interesting uh, pumping uh, mechanisms which are nowadays studied in the literature, and these are related with the other um, components of the this thermal geometric uh, tensor uh, if they have some um, uh, anti-symmetric uh, component, and this is pumping uh, between, yes, between the uh, different uh, driving uh, forces, not uh, between uh, different uh, reservoirs. Um, so I'll show you the results for the examples of the driven uh, qubit. The way to solve it uh, was uh, by uh, recourse, uh, assuming a weak coupling between the qubit and the, uh, and the reservoirs. Um, I'm writing uh, here the um, the references, but I'm not going to present uh, uh, technical details, is basically uh, to work uh, with the uh, suitably defined uh, master equations uh, which, uh, in which we have some uh, frozen component. The frozen component means that we uh, fr 
freeze the uh, Hamiltonian at a given time, and then we add some adiabatic correction. The adiabatic correction is precisely proportional to the uh, velocities uh, uh, associated to the uh, rate of change of the driving um, parameters. Uh, from there, we can uh, compute the currents and we can compute, in particular, the, um, the heat, the pumped heat. Uh, so I say, when I showed the charge pump, I, I, I told you, remember this picture, and you see that we have here the same picture for the, uh, for the heat. So this is the pumped heat, is uh, shown here in uh, black, and in red we are showing the dissipation. The way to calculate this, this is by uh, solving these uh, equations, uh, defining, properly defining this uh, vector uh, field, and uh, given these uh, protocols, uh, these different protocols with different uh, phase uh, lags, uh, we calculated the uh, average over the, the uh, uh, period uh, for the uh, heat uh, current. So I told you uh, the, um, uh, how to get this uh, pumping and this pumping gar guarantees the operation of the thermal machine. Uh, and I presented a, a geometric framework to describe uh, that. Uh, the point is that we can take advantage of this uh, geometric framework uh, to also to control and to optimize the, the performance. And to optimize the performance, we need to control the dissipation. And the nice uh, thing is that dissipation can also be uh, described uh, by a, a geometric uh, concept. So uh, the dissipation was bilinear in the uh, velocities and what appears here is the uh, symmetric component of the, um, of, the, of the tensor. And this integral uh, has the structure of, uh, so the symmetric component has the, the structure of a metric in some uh, strange space defined by the parameters. Um, and uh, this um, uh, quantity can be related to the length in this, uh, between two points in this strange uh, space with this uh, metric. Um, it can be shown that the dissipation is um, lower bounded and this bound uh, is saturated um, by a, a lens which corresponds, um, a, which, uh, corresponds to, the, um, to the, the connection, uh, um, to, so, sorry, by a protocol which corresponds to a, a lens uh, connecting uh, two points uh, at which the uh, heat production is constant uh, at every time. So something like uh, moving at a constant uh, velocity, but uh, now uh, generating uh, heat um, uh, in a at a constant uh, rate. And um, for instance, in the case of the heat uh, engine uh, operation, the same equations I showed uh, before can now be rephrased in this way. So we have here this uh, uh, heat work conversion, which I expressed uh, before in terms of a very uh, curvature, uh, of a very phase, uh, which can be, uh, by recourse to Stokes' uh, theorem, be expressed in terms of, um, of an area with a, a strange curvature defined by the very uh, curvature, and the dissipation as the square of the lens in this space with the strange metric. Um, so if we want to get the maximum uh, power, so the power is the total uh, work divided by the uh, duration, the, the period of the cycle, the efficiency is the work divided by the heat. Um, if, if we want to optimize uh, this, in, for instance, the, the power, uh, we get expressions like this, that the maximum power can be expressed as a ratio between an area and a length in this 
uh, space uh, with a special metric and uh, this uh, area defined uh, weight with the thermal, uh, with, with, the, with the very uh, curvature. So this is a, a problem, so the, the, the maximum power corresponds to the optimal ratio, be, ratio between this uh, quantity. We know that in Euclidean space, this is the uh, circle, but uh, in an arbitrary space, it's something uh, that is still an open problem in mathematics. This is a list of uh, mathematical works devoted to investigate that uh, problem. Um, but it is still useful uh, if we build uh, protocols to see uh, which are the results. So I'm finishing uh, now. Uh, this is an example of a protocol that uh, optimizes, uh, this is the, the um, uh, again, uh, the, the um, a very curvature uh, represented in the parameter space to different uh, protocols and we can show that this kind of uh, elliptical protocols are the ones which uh, optimize in this uh, problem uh, this uh, ratio. So this, uh, this is all and I would like to thank you very much uh, for your attention. <laughs> Thanks for talks. Any questions? Maybe a bit provocative question. Um, well, we understand that uh, this geometric phase, this barrier phase, is purely a classical object. Um, and we also understand that a diabatic limit is not necessarily semi-classic limit. So where is the quantum component in your, uh, in your theory? What is quantum? The qubit. <laughs> Only? So it's only qubit, which is quantum. The qubit and the Hamiltonian. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. The very phase. This is uh, yeah, yeah. the very phase can be defined for a quantum as well as a, a classical system. So very phase is not a, a, a mark for quantum. A, um, but um, in, in this case, it's useful to analyze uh, the, so it appears naturally and uh, in the structure of the problem. So the quantum is the, is, is the system itself and the fact that the, it's operating in some coherent uh, regime. So it's the context, not the formalism. Nice talk. Uh, in which kind of reservoirs are you thinking on? Because, if, for example, in circuit QED, you have your, uh, um, you know, your resonator, which should be at the same temperature of the of the qubit, but the environment could be at room temperature. So, you unify and you no, choose no. a unique reservoir. So, I'm thinking, I mean, uh, which is no, the delta no, the T that you're talking about? The delta T is uh, so it's not a single resonator, so uh, this is uh, something which uh, is a resonator with uh, many modes, uh, and it's the typical device where people analyze the spin boson model for the, so the qubit operating as a spin boson model, or for instance, the, this, this type of uh, experiments uh, in which, so, the, the, this, the, the upper where you can somehow, if these resonators which are in touch with the qubit are strongly coupled to the, uh, um, to the, to the rest of, the, of, of some uh, long transmission lines and so on, you can define a, a reservoir uh, out of that. Of course, I'm not thinking about the, um, these temperatures to be room temperature. So these are small temperatures because otherwise you don't have the structure of the qubit. So um, maybe it's a little out of context. I'm not an expert on uh, this sort of thermodynamics, but uh, it looks like this is closely related to the Landauer principle because uh, it, it's a matter of uh, the, the qubit, you're, you're 
you're sort of using as a, as a bus and the question of storing information and what is the efficiency of entropy transfer from one to another. Yeah, in some so limits we in, recover. In terms of e efficiency, do you really saturate the Landauer uh, limit? Exactly, yes. In some limit, uh, we recover that uh, limit. So this limit is recovered, for instance, if you make very long lo loops, uh, very long uh, cycles, uh, which are very close to, um, to quasi-static uh, cycles, and you recover exactly a Landauer um, result. So I guess the follow-up would be, is it possible to, with some transient uh, coherence to violate the... Uh, we don't, we are, uh, in general, we are uh, out of the, um, uh, 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 we are away from a Landauer result. So Landauer result is a limit where you have a, an almost quasi-static a quasi -static, uh, cycle. Otherwise, you are uh, out of equilibrium, and uh, so it's, it's worse than having transients because you are having the, a heat leak all the time, and uh, so you are all the time operating uh, out of equilibrium. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, you have this experiment here that where you kind of couple and decouple from the reservoirs because you have those filters at different frequencies, so it's like a frequency selective coupling. In your case, it was like the coupling was turned on and off because of the matrix elements, because you had the different operators. So I'm just wondering that which one is more efficient, or can you comment on that, like your Not scheme yet. or that scheme? or? Yeah, no, not yet. We are actually now playing with other type of uh, couplings and even with the um, uh, with two two qubits. Uh, I think that the um, I mean the the way to optimize efficiency is very uh, complicated. Because of that, I presented this um, geometric uh, formalism. Because uh, to optimize efficiency is not only to optimize this heat work conversion term, but to optimize, uh, to minimize uh, dissipation. And uh, it's very counterintuitive to, um, uh, to figure out uh, which protocols give you less uh, dissipation. So the, um, it's tricky. I cannot answer for, for the moment. Uh, in, you have to go into the details. There is no easy answer for that. Okay, thanks again, Viviana. Thank That's you. Good. Next talk.